1907, David Giddies gave John Marston furniture for his newly built home. Ma found some old furniture in the attic. As a token of gratitude for saving his ranch from a rival gang. Get down from there! <laughs> but what if I told you that this is a small gift in comparison to what he really gave John? Yes, of course, sure. It'd be, it'd be my pleasure. Mr. Giddies is without a doubt one of the most underappreciated characters in the entire game. During the epilogue, John finds himself at a crucial turning point. He's torn between his old life of crime and a new life he wants for his family. I don't care what you used to do or what your, your, your name is, this is the land of second chances. It's at this critical junction that he meets David Geddes, and this encounter would change the course of his life. The one me who went and shot him. Seemed like he deserved shoot. With the Marston family on the run from a shootout, they arrive in a small town called Strawberry. What do you know about Strawberry? Where John and Abigail are on the hunt for jobs. I saw the help wanted sign outside. Sure, but uh, you're a bit old to be stacking groceries and running errands, ain't you, son? John, using the alias Jim Milton, gets hired at a general store and is sent to deliver supplies to Pronghorn Ranch. Well, then maybe you could run some goods up to Pronghorn Ranch for me. Upon arrival, John likes the scenic location. This is quite a place. Yes, it's beautiful. And even inquires about employment opportunities. Your boss? He looking for hands? Why? You looking for work? But as we all know, trouble has a way of finding Marston. Big man around, boy? Get the hell out of here. Tensions rise when the Laramie gang starts harassing Mr. Dickens. Mind if I enjoy one of these apples? Put that down. The gang steal the wagon full of goods. Come on. <laughs> we know when we're not wanted. Get down from there. <laughs> and John chases them on horseback. Hey! This is your last chance to come out of this breathing. No! Whoa, whoa! You can't take a joke, mister! Marston, after proving himself, is able to secure a job at Giddy's farm. Please give us a chance. I can handle myself, okay? You know that already. We'll give you a chance. I'll let Mr. Giddy's know when him and his wife return tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Dickens. However, when Abigail is informed of the altercation, she expresses her concern. Real wise, Jim. What was I supposed to do? The place was getting robbed. So you show everyone who's boss? Real fine. I didn't have much of a choice. When John takes up work at Pronghorn Ranch, it's a real eye-opener for him, as well as a humbling experience. Hey, Milton, can you give me a hand with this fence? As a fella who was accustomed to the dangerous, action-packed side of life, he initially struggles with the mundane and labor-intensive work. Can't build a fence, can't milk a cow, ain't used to shoveling shits, but took on a gang of robbers single-handed. He does his best to adapt and fit into the farm and family. How about you and the boy uh, help me clean out the stables? Even going out of his way to assist David Giddy's son, Duncan, learn how to handle and ride a horse. Get on up there and go nice and slow. Keep your voice calm and your legs strong. Don't let old Jeremiah sense fear. He also manages to calm down a wild bull that managed to escape and cause trouble. Ah! Now come on, you hunk of chuck. During the chapter, we even see John take the time to bond with his son Jack. Come on, boy. Let's go for a walk. He teaches him how to ride a pony, and they even share a memorable race back to the ranch. Hey, you keep practicing your riding. But their journey to Strawberry leads to being a huge disaster. What was supposed to be a simple errand quickly goes south. Hi, I'm here to- Name? Marston. John Marston. It's a long story. Okay, John Marston. Marston... John realizes they're being tailed by guys linked to an earlier shootout, and they mean harm. What do you boys want with us? Oh, we just want to have a friendly chat. Are you John Marston? You sure look like him. John fights back, but this triggers his son's anxiety. What? It's okay, it's okay. He's emotionally overwhelmed and stressed from what he's witnessing, especially at such a young age. And by the time they get back to Pronghorn Ranch, Abigail can sense that something is off. 
How was the... What happened? We got shot at. Shot at? What happened? Her intuition proves to be correct as the Laramie gang attacks the ranch and steals cattle. And they've stolen my goddamn cattle! Jeopardizing the Getty's livelihood. What are you doing in that thing? Mr. Getty's been real good to us. What are you doing? My job, Abigail. My goddamn job. Not one to back down, John gathers the other workers and they head to Hanging Dog Ranch. Hey! You boys been coming up to Pronghorn. I thought I'd come down here. You're all so tough. Come have a word with me. You here to cut a deal? You're too... They fend off attackers. You're gonna be sorry for what you've done. And John even takes down the gang leader. As long as she bathed first and she dip, get the stink of you off of her, farmhand! <laughs> Mr. Geddes is grateful. You saved my life. No need to say nothing, sir. But this whole event pushes Abigail to a breaking point, and the unthinkable happens. She packs up. Darling John. And leaves with Jack. <sighs> John continues to work at the ranch for the next several months, and reflects on Abigail's dream of buying land and Beach's hope to start fresh. John didn't buy the idea at first, but after pondering on it and to win Abigail back, he gears up to ask Mr. Geddes a life-changing question. Hey, you think I could speak with Mr. Geddes? See if maybe he's open to offering me some guidance? No, I'm sure he'd be happy to hear you speak at least. Mr. Geddes is not just an employer. He plays a crucial role as a guiding figure in John's journey towards a better life. Mr. Geddes, this is the new ranch hand I told you about. Well, I heard you had some trouble with your welcome, but you kept your nerve and protected my property. This is especially significant, considering many of John's previous relationships were rooted in criminal activities and manipulation. What choice have we got? The Pronghorn Ranch epilogue chapter is important for a couple reasons. It provides John a glimpse into a stable life that he's always wanted for himself and his family. Well, you work hard, you be honest, you'll get your keep, I promise you that. Boy has a family. Oh, lucky man, then you better work extra hard. Mr. Geddes runs his home and land with the kind of stability and commitment that John realizes he wants for his own life. It's a massive wake-up call for Marston, making him see that being a good man is about hard work and family, not living a life of crime. Get your horses ready! We have a train to rob! In a lot of ways, he's the complete opposite of Dutch Vanderland. Well, how good for him. Sounds like he has more than enough to share. However, Mr. Geddes isn't a saint himself, because there's a reason he's often hanging around in Blackwater. I've got a lot invested in this place, and, and not just the land, but, but my family. It's, uh, it's hard to explain. There are small dialogue conversations around the ranch that give us clues if you listen closely. For instance... Getty spends on women, saves on hands. Later on, Getty says that he's heading off to town. And no hands to help with any of it. I'm supposed to be heading into town. This place is chaos. But Abe discloses something that strengthens our suspicions when he says... Is that what the boss is doing in town? Some business with them boys or something? Oh, when Mr. Geddes goes into town, well, it ain't exactly for, uh, business. Oh. So it seems that Geddes might be up to some side activities when he is in Blackwater. But his wife is no angel either. All the hands on the farm are single, with no married hands allowed. Long story. Yeah, I don't know. Married hands. It's a lot of trouble. I'm a good worker. Our first meeting with Mrs. Giddy sets the stage. She says, Duncan, what have I told you about distracting the hands? I'm sorry, Ma. <sighs> well, I hope you'll listen to me better than my Thank husband. You, Mr. Milton. Hinting at marriage issues. But it doesn't stop there. She also gives us a clue about her husband's activity in town. My God, where does my husband find men like you? Still, we all know where he goes in town, and it ain't hunting for hands. But the real eye-opener 
happens right when John helps her with delivering a calf and she invites him inside to celebrate. We'll make a proper hand of you yet, Mr. Milton. Oh, and Mr. Milton, feel free to make a call at the house sometime. Perhaps even now. A drink to toast our new arrival. And is shocked to learn that he is actually married. My wife is expecting me back. Oh, you're married? I didn't know we had any married hands. Further, when John looks to Geddes for advice, Geddes jokingly says, Take my advice, Milton. Take your money and go buy passage on a boat. Go to Brazil and forget all about family. I'm just joking, son. But there's a bit of truth hidden in that joke. To cap it off, Geddes says, yeah, I was young and dumb once, too. You'll get her back. That makes it clear that he has messed up in the past, but his wife always took him back. Despite this, Geddes plays a role of a mentor when John really needs it. He even vouches for John so he can get a loan from the Blackwater Bank for the land in Beecher's Hope. I want a loan, sir. An old ranch? Beecher's Hope? John is able to secure it, but when he goes to visit the location, he is met with resistance. Can I help you, friend? I hope so. I'm buying this land. Afraid you guys are gonna have to go somewhere else. Marston tells the squatters to go away and find somewhere new to live, which is met with a hostile reaction. Get the hell out of here! This land belongs to me now! Ain't nothing on this earth belongs to no one, partner! Looks like you made your decision then, partner! John takes control of the situation, signs the paperwork, and the land is his. How'd you make out? Well, let's just say there are no more squatters. Okay! Employment opportunities, land, and a fresh start is all thanks to Mr. Geddes. So when you think about the furniture that he gives to John, just know that it is a small gift in comparison to everything else he has given him. 